Yo, what's going on guys? This is me, Ascend, and welcome to my Unchained testing video. So once again, before we start, a uh, friendly reminder to like, comment, and subscribe if you want more videos like these. And uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else to add. Let's just jump into test hand number one. Alright, so we have... <laughs> what the heck? That's so... Oh, that's that's horrible. <laughs> that's that's not good. Uh, that is not the way of the shinobi at all. Oof, that's that's just really bad. That's like uh, yeah, that's not that's not good. <laughs> that is no bueno. Uh, so we're going to normal summon the Sarama and then use the fire guy to summon itself from the hand. Obviously, this is going to special summon itself. So uh, special summon a monster from the deck. Sorry, uh, that, that made no absolutely no sense. So we can summon abominable unchained soul. Uh... Yeah, I mean, if we summon the water one, all we can do is, like, pop that and then summon, like, another guy. It just, like, makes us, like, lose more cards from the deck. And doesn't really make, like, make us plus, so... It doesn't really matter at this point. I guess we might as well just summon that guy. Uh, there's, like, no reason to use the effect. And then we just make, um... Uh, this rage. I always get mixed up with their names. It makes no sense. And then we uh, set the call by the grave. So pretty much what's going to happen is that during, your, during our opponent's turn, we're going to use this with an opponent's monster to make Unicorn. And then, so that's how we like interruption number one, kind of. And then we can discard like the useless Soul of Disaster, shuffle back anything else. And then we also have call by the grave uh, as like a like another interruption. And also then we have Arura. So I don't know what we're going to draw. I hope uh, it's going to be something decent. Okay, yeah, it's very, very good. So we get to play Yu-Gi-Oh! at least. So hand number one was all right. It was, obviously wasn't a good hand at all, but at least it can kind of do something. So hopefully uh, we don't see any worse than that. Ooh, okay. Well, I mean, we have Pot of Extravagance with uh, two useless cards and two miscellaneous cards. So let's just see. We, we obviously can't get Ash there. Uh, what do we banish? As long as it's not like a three of... Okay, whatever. I don't care. Oh, okay. Um, that's like really bad, but like it's not that bad. Even though it's like really bad. <laughs> it's not... Yeah, I mean, no, it's it's really bad. Uh, yo, what's up with my luck, bro? Like, it, this is crazy. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We can kind of go search. Yeah, it's like... Uh, we can go that, I guess, but... No, actually, no, yeah, we can't. <laughs> yeah, I, I keep forgetting that this, this is actually not an Unchained card. So, I mean, what, like, the only things that we can do apart from that... No, actually, yeah, we can't do anything. So, the best play probably is just to keep it in the hand, not use it, and then set the call by the grave and use your hand shops to not die. And then during, like, the next turn, hopefully we top deck something. Then we can actually use, like, the knowledge of the draw for turn to search a better card. You see? You know, that already gets us uh, to play the game. But since we were foolish and actually searched a useless card, then we can't really do anything. However, I guess you can kind of say you can set it, like, for stability. And then, obviously, since they're trying to, like, they have no choice but to attack over it by battle. Because they can't really, like, go too far with your two hand traps and your call by the grave. You can just summon, like, Abominable, uh, Abominable Unchained Soul during your opponent's turn. And, I guess, get your final fourth interruption. So, honestly, it's not that bad. It's just... Very, uh, there was no reason to use it with this hand, honestly. Yeah. Anyways, next hand. Uh, I know this is playable, so you're going to normal summon this. This is obviously the unicorn during your opponent's turn play. So you can pop this and then summon the... You can even summon this from the hand. I don't think it matters too much, though. I guess you can... If you summon it from the hand, what's, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna have Unchained Soul of Rage. Where is it? It's there. Uh, you're gonna have that, then you're gonna have like another Unchained monster on your field, and your opponent's gonna have a monster, so you can make a link for during your opponent's turn, like a uh, Unchained Abomination. It's just that you're using like too many resources just for a link for, and then you have like no other cards in your hand except for like Nibiru, so obviously I don't like that. Obviously, well, I mean, you're gonna like end with uh, Abominable, Abominable Chamber, but yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, I suppose we can kind of use it. Mm. Yeah, whatever, just for the sake of the video. So, I'm gonna summon it and then going to summon this as well. Uh, no, I don't want to dis <laughs> discard a card to destroy one of my own cards. Wouldn't be uh, too logical right now. So, now we have to pop one card. It's obviously gonna be uh, Rakia because this wouldn't be good. So, summon the fire guy. Uh, we Do we need this in the grave? Not really. Not really. The only way to, like, revive it back would be with our, our trap. 
So we might as well just keep it in the deck. So we're gonna summon this. Actually, that makes no sense. Yeah, I don't know why I'm summoning this. Uh, uh, no, no, actually, no, it does make sense. Sorry. So we're gonna make Abominable blah, blah, blah. We're gonna keep Sarama because it's like the best one. that It, it actually applies pressure because we're going to keep looping uh, the, the chamber, like the revival card. So during our opponent's turn, we actually have uh, some cool stuff that we can do. Even if we can't resolve Nibiru because our opponent is playing a trap deck, we can still like interrupt our opponent's board a lot because we can make Unicorn using their monster, so number one. And then uh, you, we use Unicorn's effect, so number two. And then we can summon back Ab Abominable Unchained Soul during your opponent's turn, discard Nibiru, destroy any card on the field, so that's interruption number three in a way. Uh, and then we can obviously just play with Sarama next turn. Let's just see our top deck. In like, assuming that these cards are discarded, so... Uh, well, yeah, obviously I'm going to revive back Thingy. Uh, there's no reason to pretend like I'm using the effect. Okay, well, I mean, whatever, that's fine, actually. So we, we would just do that and then use the effect. Oh my god. <laughs> we would use the effect and then probably, like, just set this again. And then destroy the water guy and then summon from the deck. And then that's that would probably be game at this point. Like, you have just so much damage on the field, so... Yeah, yeah, honestly, it, it definitely does have potential. It's pretty cute. Anyways. Uh, this is very good. Oh, wow. So, I honestly don't even want to... Yeah, I don't even want to make Unicorn during my opponent's turn. Well, I mean, obviously I want to, but I don't want to use the effect because... That would force me to discard the Ash because it's the only card that's actually not going to be in my hand uh, during the end phase. Because all of these cards are going to be set, and even though I do have to destroy one of them with uh, the effect of Aruha, it's going to be... Uh, it's going to get reset back with thanks to Sa Sarama. Sa oh my god, the names, man. Anyways, so we set any of them, it doesn't matter, as long as it's not like Called by the Grave that you're setting like a moron. So now effect, you obviously cannot get Ashed. You summon Sarama. Yeah, Sarama. So... Alright, cool. Then you're going to set back this card and then destroy the fire guy. Then obviously you're going to be summoning an abominable, uh, an, an unchained soul monster. Very important, otherwise once again you cannot make the link to. You don't need to use the effect. How many summons even was that? I didn't really count. Is this exactly four summons? One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's exactly four summons. We're Nibiru proof. Uh, honestly, th this also like... It's also something that you have to take into consideration when you deck build. If your de if your deck has combos that are always like four summons or less, that's just like so beautiful. Or if your fifth summon like starts negating monster effects. But anyways, once again we have the uh, interruption during our opponent's turn, so we can link using their monster. So that's interruption number one. We have Ash. Interruption number two. We have I mean Escape of the Unchained could actually come up because we have the revival card as well. So. Uh, interruption number three, and then call by the grave interruption number four. Definitely with a follow up as well, because you're going to revive back uh, uh, Aruha and then destroy it with uh, escape. Destroy another card in your opponent's field, and then summon uh, Sarama from the deck. And then next turn, we do the exact same thing. Basically, the follow up of this deck is always like loop Sarama as much as you possibly can. Uh, this is. Meh. Let's just see my draws. No, never mind. This hand is nuts. What? I didn't even, like, uh, realize I had uh, prison in my hand. Whoa. Never mind. This is nutty. And even my banishes are not too bad. Oh, so okay. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be searching for... It doesn't really matter. Yeah, whether it's the fire or the water, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, because the thing is, we have no other normal summon. And we have no other way to draw, so whatever. Uh, we're going to be setting the Wall King? Eh? Yeah? Yeah, sure, why not? It doesn't make a difference. Even though we have two of these, we can actually just kind of do something cool you're gonna see soon enough. So, we're going to be summoning, of course, Sarama. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, this is where we do it. So we set it, set back this, and then use the effect. Uh, well, I mean, use the effect. It still has to resolve. So we summon the this guy. No, definitely not use the effect. And then, do we activate this? 
Because we're not trying to make... Yeah, I mean, we can make Unchained Abomination during our opponent's turn and destroy so many cards. Because this would destroy one card on the field because you summoned an Unchained Link monster. And then Abomination also has an, uh, its effect. So when a card on the field... Well, if a card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, you can destroy one card. During the end phase, you can destroy another card. So during your opponent's end phase, you can just destroy three cards. And since you have this, you can destroy four cards. It's pretty good. But yeah, I get... I guess we might just activate it. Alright. So now we get to summon this. Uh, we don't need to keep this. Yeah, even Rekia is just useless. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had to link this off, obviously. Uh, we don't want to use the effect to... Uh, we can destroy our own Sarama. And that does nothing. Once again, man, if only those cards actually just said destroy a card on the field, and if you do, like do something cool on top of that but it's just like i replace my monster with another monster it, it just doesn't really give me anything it doesn't get me anywhere uh yeah i mean sarama is like the best one on the field too if obviously it was like turn two then i would summon the unchained soul uh i think the name is uh rage no disaster disaster huh? yeah disaster is the level eight that i'm talking about so yeah and then of course we said this and during our opponent's turn i already explained the the follow-up Ooh, my god, uh, Pot of Extravagance was going to be expensive, huh? If I use it again, I'm just gonna have... Okay, well, I mean, we link summon during our opponent's turn, so we're going to go... Uh, we're gonna drop to seven cards in the extra deck, and then this is going to be able to resolve, so... It's uh, it's something, I guess, so not too bad. Ooh, okay, we can actually resolve the power uh, supply squad during our own turn. Whoa, that's, that's actually sick. So we're gonna set this, and then use the effect, summon this. We're gonna, we're gonna be drawing a card, that's really nice. So, summon Sarama. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be resetting this. And then, obviously, destroy Aruha. So, Chain Link 1 Supply Squad, Chain Link 2 Aruha. That's, like, mandatory since this is just, like, you don't choose. So, obviously, we're gonna summon this guy. Oh, wait, hold on. They actually summon from the hand, too? Yeah, okay, I'm really bad. <laughs> I'm, re I'm really dumb. I am pretty sure in the deck profile I said I, I said the only special summon from the deck. That is 100% incorrect. Oh, that's that's uh, not good. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, anyways, so gonna normal summon the water guy. I just realized I drew Ash. I'm so skillful at Yu-Gi-Oh. Jeez, oh my god. So link these off. And yeah, you see, it's just, it's as easy as that. It's like, you're gonna be drawing once again during your opponent's turn because you do, like, Escape of the Unchained, you're gonna destroy one card on their field, Interruption number one, and then you link off, you make Unicorn, and then you have Ash, so four Interruptions. That's very sick. <laughs> and you draw one card, so you get back your card advantage here extremely quickly. The first time you use Supply Squad is just to break even, and then every single time after that, it's a plus one for every single power, uh, Supply Squad that you have, and there are not a hard ones per turn, so if you have multiple Supply Squads, every single one of them draws one card. So if you have three Supply Squads, it's just like insane. During your opponent's turn and during your turn, it's draw, just draw three every single time. That's cool. Uh, yeah. Alright. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I feel like every hand is always the exact same, honestly, jeez. Uh, abomination search, I mean... I'm gonna search this, the interrupt. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I mean, yeah, I suppose. Uh, sad, destroy, summon Sarama, once again. Uh, this uh, deck literally does the exact same thing over and over and over again. The fact that we drew two of the Call of the Haunted is not that bad because we can use one of them to like actually use it like as a trap like to revive back a monster and then the other one we just keep it face down and we can actually just destroy it with the water guy and uh, well I mean we're not gonna have a water guy actually yeah we, we are because we can revive it back and then we can summon like another monster because we popped it while it, it was face down uh, which actually changes absolutely nothing to our lives because we don't have anything to discard for unicorn uh, Oh, my, I mean, Abominable Unchained Soul, even for Unicorn. I really want to keep the, the Ash in the hand, but... Uh, yeah. Obviously, now use the effect. Make the Link to. And yeah, I mean, if you really value Unicorn... You know what? Yeah, sure. Sure. So, if you really value the Unicorn, you just keep this in the hand. So, then you revive back a monster, you destroy it with, esca uh, with Escape. 
and then you can just do a, a lot of really cool things. Even if that wasn't an Ash, it wouldn't be uh, too bad. You would have like the discard uh, shuffle with the unicorn, and then the discard pop one with uh, this that you actually revive. Or actually, you revive something else, and then when you destroy it with us escape, then you can actually summon um, like the second copy of Abominable Unchained Soul from your deck. So yeah. Anyways, let's just go into one final hand. Honestly, this is getting very repetitive. I, I swear, I swear, it's literally the exact same thing every single time. I really don't see how you can do anything different, but at the same time I kind of do, because you can set back an Unchained Monster from uh, from uh, from your graveyard and then destroy it with this. So you can actually just end on a tiny bit more amount of monsters, so we're gonna try this out. Oh wait, hold on, I'm already... Okay, I'm already not even... Uh, in the in the right direction that's uh, not what I was supposed to do <laughs> oh, that's pathetic anyways so reset back this destroy water guy and then summon this wait this is escape okay okay sure no it's it's good actually it's good I'm not complaining uh, so destroy Sarama Yeah, I guess I want to summon... It's crazy, it's like, I don't get to showcase Unchained Soul of Disaster when I'm doing the test hands, because it only has an effect when you're going second. If you're going first, then you summon it to do what? Just to float, like, revive back a monster from your grave when it gets destroyed? I, I guess so, but yeah. Anyways, now in hindsight, I feel like this probably should be just more of a one-off, since you can just summon from the hand. I didn't really... Yeah, I feel like I should probably get some new glasses. That's uh, pretty pathetic, but... um. I don't know what to summon here. Changes nothing to my life, huh? Yeah, I guess just this. And then make a link to... Alright, so once again, you get to pop one card on each player's field because, you know, you have escape. And then you have the unicorn during your opponent's turn with the discard, I guess. You can just discard Sarama or Nibiru or use Nibiru as an interruption, so... It depends on how you want to interrupt your opponent or if you want to keep, uh, like, a follow-up because... I wouldn't discard Sarama, I want to keep it in the hand so I can just easily recover. Because Sarama on its own is a one card you like Yu-Gi-Oh when you get to play like after turn one. Whereas like Nibiru, like I don't I really don't think you need it because you are you're already interruptive enough. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my test hand video. If you have any comments or feedback, let me know in the comment section below. And um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed and thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace!